Shalom to the hopeful elected Israel, you so-called Hebrew Israelites, so-called Negroes, Latinos, Puerto Rican, West Indian, and Haitians. Got to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakaq, Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of great, uh, double the honors to the elders and apostles of great millstone who rule well, who teach well. And this is a sincere salutation uh, to uh, the Aqua and Akim that are listening, uh, tuning in. Appreciate that any time in the, in the time you came across this video, man. I appreciate you checking it out. Uh, you know what I'm saying? We're pushing this to the four corners of the earth. And as, as Raya always says, Lord willing, this be edifying. So, uh, yesterday, hold on real quick. Yesterday, I told, well, earlier tonight, I said that I was going to do a video. It's going to show you about this 5031C tax write off, and then we're going to deal with some scriptures, man. And I'm going to light these motherfucking churches up. I'm going to light them up, man. I'm going to hit them with like 30 scriptures. I don't care if you're listening to them or not. We're going to put them all out. And if anybody say, well, how the church is evil, I'm going to just see the video, man. And I'm going to be just calling them out, cutting the head off, cloud, cloud. Okay. But first, <sighs> man, good old Azariah, man. He don't play. He did. He got the whole video. He done put up. He done straight up read the whole doggone 50C13 and explained it to you. Okay. I've seen it already. Okay. So. I'm going to go through here and just let them play the video. It might last a little longer than an hour, and I'll have a part two. And the part two is just going to be drilling their ass on all the shit that they've done there. Okay? Because you think that these churches are just people signing with something. No, they signed an agreement with the devil, man. And they're going to pay for it. So, here we go. So, Lord willing, be had a fine. Now, this is about the 501c3. I'm going to read some of this. Lord willing, I'm going to read most of it. So, let me pull this up. And because all these counts, man, every count that you have seen on YouTube has a 501c3 taxes in. Now, you can see. If you go to Google and pull this up, yep. I, I've been having this in my phone for years. I keep it in my phone. Whether I get a new phone, I always keep this app in my phone. This article. This is the real original article. Sometimes when you go to Google and try to put it up, you ain't going to get all of it. This is the article that has everything in it. It's titled, The Government Owns and Runs Your Church and Its Doctrine. 501c3 tax exempt organization. Now I'm gonna read some of this. I just want to make sure I'm sharing it. Everybody can see it. Hey, thank you for tuning in. So let's read some of this. They say most churches in America have organized as 501c3 tax exempt religion organization. This is a fairly recent trend. It has only been going on for about 50 years. Churches were only added to Section 501c3 of the tax code in 1954. We can thank Senator Lyndon B. Johnson for that. Johnson's was, Johnson was no ally of the church. As part of his political agenda, Johnson had it in mind to size the church and eliminate the significant influence the church had always had on shaping public policy. They say, although Johnson, they say, proffered pro this as a favor, proffered this as a favor to churches. The favor also came with strings attached, more like shackles. One need not look far to see the devastation effects 501c3 except, acceptance has had to the church 
and to consequent restrictions placed upon any 501c3 church. 501c3 churches are prohibited from addressing in any tangible way the vital issues of the day, which we always talking about the RFID microchip, which is the mark of the beast, Jacob's trouble, uh, the, the famine, the pestilence, the sword that's coming. These churches can't talk about these things. Oh, that you that you are Hebrew Israelites, and the Hebrew Israelites consist of so-called Negro Latinos, Native Americans, West Indians, and, church, and, and Haitians. Let's read on. It says for for a five hundred one c three church is openly for a five hundred one c three church to openly speak out or organize in opposition to any that the government declares legal, even if it even if it is immortal. It says, e.g., abortions, homosexuality, same-sex marriages, et, etc. That church, that church would jeopardize its tax exempt status. The 501c3 has had a chilling effect upon the free speech rights of the church. LBJ, which is Lyndon B. Johnson, was a shrewd and cunning political. Uh, a shrewd and cunning politician who seemed to well appreciate how easily many of the clergy would sell out. It said he was a what shrewd and cunning politician. When you go and look, and when you go into uh, Ephesians chapter six, when it said, "Put on the whole arm of the Lord, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil." When you go to the word wiles, it means cunning, crafty, trickery. Conniving, okay. That's these devils, right? It said, but we, but we go any. It said before we go any further with this issue, it is important to view the big picture. Without the larger view, there will only be confusion. That's what Babylon the Great is. Now, this next line, you got to pull this up because I'm not going to read it because it goes into. This guy, Lyndon B. Johnson, and who he really was. You got to pull this article up and read the next line. I ain't going to be able to read it. Um, I can, but they might take this video down if I read this line. That's how cold this article is. So, going back to show you the article, the name of it, the government owned, you got to you gotta put all this in. When you put it in Google, the first one going to come up, that's the one you click on. The government owns and runs your church and its doctrine. 501c3 tax exempt organization. Type that in in Google, and the first one that'll pop up, you're going to get it. The next line, I ain't going to read because they might take the they might, they just might take the video down. It's not a video, but just reading what you want, what you want to see on this, uh, the fourth paragraph, they might take the video down. So I'm going to jump to the fifth one. And it reads, did the church ever need to seek permission from the government to be exempt from taxes? Did the church ever need to seek permission from the government to be accepted, to be exempt from taxes? No, it didn't. Were churches proud to 1954 taxable? It say no churches have never been taxable to be to be taxable, a church will first need to be under the jurisdiction and therefore used under the taxing authority of the government. Which, what is government? The word government means control, mind, mind control. The First Amendment clearly places the church outside the jurisdiction of the civil government. Congress shall make no law respecting and establishing an establishment of religion. It say nor prohibiting the free exercise thereof. It say the next line say religion cannot be free if you have to pay the government through taxation to exercise it. Since churches aren't taxable in the first place, why do so many of them go to the IRS and seek permission to be tax exempt. 
It occurs out of ignorance. We didn't know any better. It's a bandwagon logic. Everyone else is doing it. Professional advice. Many attorneys and CPAs recommend it. Does the law require or even encourage a church to organize as a 501c3? To answer that question, let's turn to what the IRS itself has to say. To lock it, let me get rid of this pop-up. The damn devil with pop-ups. Next slide say churches need not apply. In order to be considered for tax exempt status by the IRS, an organization must fill out and submit IRS Form 1023 and 1024. However, note what the IRS says regarding churches and church ministers in Publication 557. Some organizations are not required to file Form 1023. These include churches, inner church organizations, or local units of a church, conventions, or associations of churches, or interrogated or integrated auxiliaries of a church, such as men's or women's organizations, religions, religion schools, mission society, or youth groups. It say um these organizations are exempt automatically if they meet the requirements of section 501c3. I'm gonna try to get all this meat off here. It says churches are automatically tax exempt according to IRS code 508 C1A, specially rules with respect to section 501c3 organizations. New organizations must notify. It's a uh, secretary that they are applying for recognition, recognition of Section 105C3 status. Mandatory exceptions, subsections, it say, shall not apply. It say churches, their integrated auxiliaries and conventions or associations of churches. Now, let's scroll down. It say churches have a mandatory exemption to filing tax returns. Not only is it completely unnecessary to any for any church to seek 501c3 status, to do so becomes a grant of jurisdiction to the IRS by any church that obtained the state favor. In the words of Steve Nestor, IRS Senior Revenue Office. It's a 501c3 problem. Right, let's read this. It says the court excerpts that, a, that an exempt organization, one that has become a 501c3, must demonstrable serve and be in harmony with the public interest. You see that? Must have a purpose that comports with the common community conscience and must not act in a manner firmly, affirmatively, affirmatively at odds with the declared position of the whole government. Taken together, these passages suggest that the primary function of a tax exempt organization is to act on behalf of the government in carrying out Government is a governmentally approved policies. See? When a church accepts the 501c3 status, here we go. That? You are something to deal with the devil. Church waves its freedom of speech, waves its freedom of religion, waves its right to influence legislators and the legislation they craft. Waves its constitutional guarantee rights, it's no longer free to speak to the vital issues of the day, which we do because it say becomes controlled by a spirit of fear. <laughs> wow, <laughs> becomes controlled by a spirit of fear that if it doesn't toe the line, 
with the IRS, it will lose its tax exempt status. So IUIC, ISUPK, GOCC, these groups can't do these things. Of oh, speaking of Jacob Trouble, the RFD Microchip, Mark of the Beast, they can't speak on these things because. They- and that's why every time you go to church, they ain't talking about nothing, man, because they can't. They will lose their tax exempt status. You see? Let's keep reading. It's a sellouts. Becomes controlled by a spirit of fear that if it doesn't toe the line with the IRS, it will lose its tax exempt status. Becomes a state church. Here we go. It said one need not look far to see that the churches accepted of the 501c3 and its significant restrictions has had devastation consequences to not only the church but to the entire nation. The church in America today is by and large not speaking to the vital issues of the day and the church has been effectively silenced in it's a inevitable, inevitable, I can't never say that word right. Inevitable results in a moral downward spiral in the culture as the church stands mute. This six spiraling down. Remember, I told you that that's where you're going if you're listening to any of them or if you're one of them. It did not happen by accident, but by design. The front man was Senator Leonard B. Johnson from Texas with the New World Order. That's another line that I can't bring out. You gotta look at it, you gotta read it. I ain't gonna read them jumping down. It's say one man. interesting notice. It say one interesting note. Kennedy was assassinated not by one single bullet, but by five shots. That's another article. That's another paragraph you can read. So let's get to the let's get to the meat of this. You got a whole video on that. I got a whole video on that, man. That's the Esau's hiding places. And on top of that, it wasn't five. We're going to keep moving. You say how the IRS controls Christian churches. So it's say text Mars of power of prophecy. Maybe it was five shot. I can't remember, man. It doesn't even matter. And often radio broadcast has been the focus of an extended IRS Don't change the fact these some devils. Because of his conservative Christian views, he has learned the IRS rules firsthand the hard way. They are listed on his website. So that's okay. So it says, according to the IRS, here we go. According to the IRS, 501c3, Christian churches, ministry, and organizations may not do the following. It said they may not do the following. Here we go. Expose conspiracy. Criticize the New World Order. Say or publish anything negative about any politician, Republican, or Democrat. Number four. It say criticize government agencies and bureaus, the IRS, FBI, BTE, BATF, CIA, EPA, DEA, OSHA, DOJ, etc. Number five, this is what they can't do. Criticize any institution of government such as the White House, the Congress, the Federal Reserve Board, to say even though that is a private corporation or the Supreme Court. Number six, encourage citizens to call or write their congressman, senator, governor, mayor, or other public officials. Criticize any proposed or pending bill or legislation that would take away the rights and freedom of the people. This is what they cannot speak about. Number number eight, make disparaging remarks about or criticize any other faith group, cult, or religion. Expose or criticize the New Age movement. Verse number 10. Support or encourage a law or by a citizen militia, even though this is constitutional. The churches still can't speak about it. 
even though it's constitutional. Number number twelve. Or number yeah. No, number eleven. Support or encourage the Second Amendment, the right of the people to keep and bear arms. Number twelve. Discourage discourage young women from getting a portion or endorse the pro life movement. Number thirteen. Teach that abortion, especially partially birth abortion, is murder and is the killing of innocent babies. You can't talk about this. And now, when you read with them, I mean, when we read these things and hear it, now you know why these other groups don't speak about Jacob's trouble. And see, this is all other groups, all other churches. They don't speak on it, man, because he saw gave them the bag, man. They can't talk, bro. So if you're listening to them, man, you're listening to the devil. She ain't getting no answers. Hence, this is why we're here doing it. Or what's going on in the world today? Because these are the issues of the day that none of these other groups can't talk about. And you never hear none of these other groups speak about these things. This is number 14. Identify homosexuality as a sin and an abomination to God. You can't talk about that. See? Number 15. Express an opinion on any subject or issue. You can't talk about the issue of the day. But anything that got to do with World War Three, the RFD Michael Chiwis, the Mark of the Bees, race riots, can't talk about martial law, uh, concentration camps, none of that. Nothing. This is number 16. Appeal to people's emotions by employing an evangelist in a salakia. Appeal to people's emotions by employing an evangelization method such as, listen to this, fire and brimstone preaching, not considered a reasoned approach by the IRS. Come on, man. What is Hold on. Half the Bible. Is underwater, and the other part of the Bible is about on fire, being on fire, okay? So you say we can't teach half the Bible? Hold on, man. <laughs> you saw bugged out, you think I saw that? I'm in the closet over here by myself. Can't trust none of them devils, man. They ain't gonna deliver you, man. Hold on real quick, man. Computer's down. Go ahead and put it on the charger. It's logic, man. That's a little piece that I'm looking for. Keep playing that, y'all. The Lord will destroy this place with what? Fire and brimstone. From what? The intercontinental ballistic missiles. But you can't talk about these things. Number 17. Let's read 16 again. It says, appeal to the people, emotions, by employing an evangelization method such as fire and brimstone preaching, not considered a reasoned approach by the IRS. It's number 17. Discuss or identify threats to Christianity, which is what the Lord said they persecuted him. They will persecute us also, right? You can't sit in those prayers house, hey, about the truth. The truth is going to get you locked up, right? Number 18. Discuss subjects or topics that IRS deems is a sensationalist, right? Number 19. Criticize well-known public figures 
for institutions that IRS deems worthy, such as the super rich elite, the international bankers, the Hollywood movie industry, etc. Definitely see, not. Oh, de- definitely them. not them. You Def- can't. You can't definitely Lord talk about that. them because they're just. They're just great people, you know what I mean? What are they doing wrong? Psych. And that's why it's plain in Luke 14, verse 9 and verse 6, and the Lord say, Go to the highways and byways, to the streets and lanes, to the hedges, right? Because in the highways and byways, you can push, you can push this gospel freely. That's why it's going to come a time that's why when we out there, cut man. off from brothers going out to the highways and byways. This is where you're going to find the prophets, man. On the highways and byways. And on the computer teaching the truth. But they ain't got no infomercials. They're not just saying some random junk. Okay, we're giving you all doctrine, man. Okay? Straight out the block, man. Any other way you're getting it, you're getting it from devils. By way teaching the truth. When you go out there, it's free speech, man. Okay? You see, when you That's got these churches, you can't do this. Can't this do is it. number 20. Just read number 19 again. Criticize well-known public figures or institutions that IRS deems worthy, such as the super rich elite, international bankers, the Hollywood movie industry, as far as TD Snakes, Duffalo Dollar, Geo Jennison, uh, Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackass, Joe Austin, George Mai, you can't talk about these people. At least they don't want you to talk about them in other churches. You can't do it. Well, under the 501c3, you can't do it. This is number 20. Publish or broadcast information on any topic without giving credence to the opposing viewpoints of Christ's enemies, of Yahweh Shai's enemies. <laughs> and that's crazy. This is number 21. Publish and offer books, tapes, or products that expose the elitist plot against humanity and God. Come on, man. See, they know what they're doing, man. They know they're going against the Lord, you hear me? This is part of Psalms 83, the conspiracy, man. This is what they did, man. This is why you go to church. They say, all oh, welcome to come. Because they feed you lies, man. That's all in the scriptures. <laughs> Number 21 again. It's a publish and offer books, tapes, or products. What's the main book? King James 1611 Bible. They don't want you bringing this book out. That's why they're going to what? They're going to, they're going to make this book. They're going to eliminate it. They're going to burn them up. They're going to pass a law. But you can't read the Bible, man. It's a publish and offer books. See? This is just gonna happen, man. They're gonna get rid of everything, man. They're trying to. They're out of time, man. And we finna put their ass on blast. Tapes or products. Hey, man, the water for that, man. You the only one doing it, man. Jim, Great Millstone, man. They the only ones doing it, man. The water to all the great stone men, men bro, uh, brothers and sisters that are tuning in to this. And also, thank you for the ones that are pushing the truth, man. I don't know all y'all that are pushing the truth, but, man, we appreciate your help, man, because I'm here, too. You know what I'm saying? We the people, man. We, we, we care. The ones who really care, man, we out here with y'all. And, uh, we finna blow these churches up, man. With all these scriptures, man. We finna blow them up on the map. So you can see when you step in the door next time, you listen to this. You step in the door of your church. You gonna remember it. You gonna remember this if you watch this video. You gonna remember it. They wasn't right, man. So it's going off. So let's just read this. O oh, righteous father. The world have not known thee, but I have known thee. And these have known that thou hast sent me. Okay? And I have declared unto thee thy name, and I will declare it, and that the love uh, wherewith you has loved me may be in them, and I in them. Okay? Psalm 17, 25. Let's pull up Psalms. Psalms 10. In verse 7. 
Okay, verse 7 and 8. Let's look that up. Let's see what that say. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue, the mischief and vanity. It's talking about Deflo Dollar and Bimbo Jennings and all them motherfuckers, man. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud, man. That's them. They're cursing people, not curse words. They're cursing people by giving you false doctrine. You being thrown in that. You being thrown into confusion, and then you're gonna die, man. A grievous death, man. Okay. Under his tongue, the mischief and vanity. He sitteth in lurking places of the villages, and in the secret places doeth he murder the innocent. His highs are privy against the poor, man. The privy against the poor. All them rich people in there. Look, he lieth. He lie. He he lieth in wait secretly in the lion is a den, and he lieth to wait and catch the poor. He do catch the poor when he draw him, uh, draw him into his net. See. That's the that's the offering bucket, man. He done drawing y'all in there, y'all dropping that petrol dollar in there, thinking you're gonna get saved. And then you go down backyard, and that dirty tub they got, you go dip in that water. Now you done straight up condemned yourself to hell, man. You have no idea, man. Matthew five forty four. That's why I ain't never go do it, man. Lord put spirit on me, Lord willing. <sighs> Lord is willing, he put the spirit on me, and he did. I know he did. He put the spirit on me not to do that junk. That's why I never did. Ain't dipping no water. I don't know what the hell that got to do with anything, man. That's why I ain't believing, man. It was not sound doctrine. But now that I know I got the right doctrine, here I am. All right, man. Matthew 5, 14. Let them alone. Uh, they blind, uh, let, uh, let them alone. They blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into a ditch, man. Here we go. Acts 7, 48. Okay. How would be the most high dwell of not in temples made with hands? <laughs> I said the prophet, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build me, said the Lord Yahweh Or what is the place to my rest? You know where it is? <laughs> Let me show you. This is where it is. This is where he's resting at right here. And none of those places where you're going to church, he's not there. I'm going to show you where he is right here, right now. Pretty sure y'all know by now, okay? If not, then you're just sleeping under a ditch somewhere, okay? First Peter two and five. I'm gonna give you three. I'm gonna give you proof three times, just for the ones who just think we're playing. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood. And offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to your how about Shimmy how was shy. That's what it say, man. See? And y'all be like, well, where does it say your how? Because your brain doesn't work. Go watch the video where your how was shy was written in the Bible. Don't come over here and be talking all that bull biggity because our brains work over here. Okay? We're not here for you. That's why if Anytime you came in your life, you came to come read this, and you send that message, and this is why I'm saying this, because I know it's going to happen, you're going to get blocked, bro, because I don't care, okay? I'm not here for that. We're here for the people who are trying to stay alive, okay? You want to die? Go die over there. Just leave us alone. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, which is Yahweh, and that the spirit of Yahweh dwelleth in you, see? If a man, if any man defile the temple of Yahweh, which is all of us, him shall Yahweh destroy. It. For the temple of Yahweh is holy, which the temple ye are. See, this is why we're doing this because if we don't do it, he's going to destroy us. Okay, that's everybody. So if you're not doing this, and you're a so-called Negro, Latino, Puerto Rican, West Indian, and Haitian, Native American, and you think you don't have to, well, you've defiled your body before, sir. That means that you're guilty. You need to bring your ass over here to this table. You need to sit down, and you need to pull out these scriptures, and you need to read some truth, okay? Or the Lord's going to destroy you, okay? You better come sit down at this table, boy, because if you don't, 
Gonna be in trouble, okay? That's what happened to me. I said I heard them. They said, you gonna come sit down at the table, boy. I said, all right. Give me about 10 minutes. I'm pulling up, okay? We pulling up. You know what I'm saying? That's just a figure of speech, man. Like, don't try to take everything so serious. But look, man. Don't play, man, with the Lord, okay? See, look. Flee fornication. Every sin that man does it without the body. But he that committed fornication sin against his own body. We all done that. And ain't talking about, I don't think it's talking about sleeping with women, man. Like, they said that that wasn't a sin, okay? But just like being lustful for no reason, like you just with somebody and y'all ain't even equally yoked, y'all ain't not learning the word, you just messing with them, maybe that's not good. But just because you like just sleep with a woman that's not owned by somebody's man, that's not bad. But you got to be, y'all both got to be dealing with the scriptures, man. You can't just be, you know what I mean? This is a spiritual journey, man. And if it's not that, then it's carnal. So the Lord's not going to glorify that at all, man. He's going to destroy it. So what? You know that not your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's supposed to be spirit, which is in you, which ye have of Yahweh, and ye are not your own. So we're not even own our own bodies, man. For ye are brought up with the print with the price. So you were bought with a price. Therefore the glory uh therefore glorify Yahweh in your body and in your spirit. Which are your howls, man? See, he owns us, man. We have an obligation to Israel, man. And this is why we got all these celebrities getting off, man. Are not serving the Lord the way he said. Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah 23, 26. Don't, don't, don't worry. I know I only got an hour, but if I get up to 50 to 55, I'm going to go into the second one and drill them in some up, okay? But I'm pretty sure I'm going to get all these scriptures in. Jeremiah 23, verse 26. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the seat of their own heart, which is their own mind, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor. As their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. Same thing. They talking about Baal, which is the one. You want to see what he looked like? Let me show you what he looked like. Okay. That's what he looked like. This is who these, these Edomites worship, man. This is one of them. I try to tell you they don't. But there you go. That's him, man. That's him. Right there, bro. That's the same people over there in Hollywood. That's who they giving their life to, man. And the essence and time and everything, bro. This is what they looking at. This is what they worshiping, man. This guy, okay? When we talked about Astro World and sacrificing the Moloch, what did Moloch look like? It looked just like that. Just a little bit, man. That's all them right there. The little Buckethead Leroy's over there. Give him over that baby, man. That's them, man. Okay, they're wicked, man. Okay, we try to tell y'all this. Y'all thought it was a game. No, sir. No, it's not. Okay, this is in the game. This is what they're doing every day. Okay, on a regular basis, man. You, know, you got all the people on the milk cartons. Man, them people ain't missing, man. They know where they at. Lord, have mercy on my son. Matthew 17, 15. Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is... Uh, before he is lunatic and sore vexed, and oftentimes he falls in the fire and often to the water. Okay, and I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Yahusha answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer? Suffer you? Bring him hither to me. Yahusha be rebuked the devil, which is who he saw him, and we departed out of him. And really not Esau Edom, but Satan, which is the father of Esau Edom. He departed out of him, and that child was cured from that very hour. Okay. And it says, Then came the disciples to Yahweh depart, to Yahweh depart, and said, Why could we not cast him out? Okay, this, these Pharisees trying to do that, man. It says, And Yahweh said unto them, Because you're unbelieving, for barely I say unto you, 
We have faith as a grain of a mustard seed. You shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. That's talking about us right now. We move in mountains because mountains is people. And that's why we say, Lord, willing this be edifying? We move in people, man. Okay, we're moving you out of the way of destruction. That is what we're doing. And if you're meant to move out of the way of destruction, you're going to get the fuck out of the way. But if not, prepare for destruction, man. Okay? These, these words are edifying to you. That means that you are already dead. Okay? Understand? Matthew 5, 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law, nor the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Verily I say unto you, to heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall be shall in no wise pass from the law, till it all be fulfilled, man. He's not playing. He's going to come make sure every single one of his words came out to play. And that's why we over here talking, because y'all ain't read some of the stuff that he said that was going to come out to play, man. This is why y'all are not thinking this is a big deal, okay? So we're trying to pull out as much as we can for y'all so you can get filled with the Holy Spirit, man, if you're supposed to. Hosea 2.10, and now I will discover the lewdness in the sight of her lovers, and none shall deliver her out of mine hand. Okay. Let's say, what does lewdness mean? Shamelessness, lewdness. Hmm. Immodesty. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about Israel. Mm-hmm. Therefore, I will turn and take away my corn in time thereof, and my wine in season thereof, and I will recover my wool and flesh, given to cover her nakedness. And now I will discover the lewdness in the sight of her lovers, and none shall deliver her out of mine hand. I will also cause her, cause her meals to cease in feast days, and new moons of Sabbaths, and all her solemn feasts. See? We have Sabbaths, man, or the moons, man. You know what I'm saying? See? Israel's unfaithfulness condemned. We got condemned, bro. That's why we are here reading these scriptures trying to be uncondemned. Okay? And that's why y'all think it's not a big deal, because y'all didn't get condemned this last time. Well, actually, you did. But you just don't remember because your brain doesn't work. That's okay. You know, we're here to fix brains with your howl shine. That's the only way you're going to get it fixed. And if you can't see, that means that he just made you forever broken and you're never going to get fixed. Leave me, O Lord, your howl shine, my righteousness because of my enemies. Make that way straight before my face. Please, you ask these 10 8. Alright. He that diggeth the pit shall fall into it, and whoso breaketh the hedge, a serpent shall bite him. Okay, whoso removeth stone shall be hurt therewith, and he that cleaveth the wood shall be endangered thereby. That's talking about the people who clean on that cross, wearing Jesus pieces, thinking that you love the Lord. And that's talking about the ones that remove who? Who was the stones? Us, man. You're in trouble. You're in big trouble, man. Lord willing to says, I'm pretty sure it is. It sure ain't y'all. Jeremiah 8 5. I don't care about the Lord. Y'all not doing nothing, man. And you might want to start. When? Why then? If this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding, they hold fast to see, they refuse to return, man. Used to return. So you know what the Lord going to do? He's going to make you go somewhere. You ain't going to be where you want to go. I promise you that. There's going to be no female house. And they can, and this is Job 15.35. And they conceive mischief and bring forth vanity and their belly prepare for deceit, man. It is, man. Let's pull this up out the apocrypha. Wisdom of Solomon, 
how be it how be it for both causes shall they be justly punished both because they thought not well of Yahweh, giving heed unto idols and also unjustly swore in deceit disposing holiness what they swore how they swore in deceit huh with the 5013c man what you mean proverbs Six, he that dwelleth dissembleth with his lips and layeth up deceit within him when he speaketh fair believe him not for there are seven abominations in his heart man whose hatred is covered by deceit his wickedness shall be showed before the whole congregation man you Geno Jennings, you thrust your dollars, you congro, your bucket heads, you man. Oh, again. TD snakes. All oh, y'all, man. Y'all gonna get called out, man. Who's so digging the picture of firing them? He that roll up the stone, they will return upon him. A lion a lion tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it. And a flattering mouth worketh ruin, man. See, that's what they do. They speak with flattery, man. They always try to go in there, they got their little heart plantums. The Lord is good, man. Mm-hmm. And they go get in their little jet and fly off in, in the sunset while you go home with, uh, with, with, all, with $10 left in your pocket because you gave them niggas 20 Thinking the Lord going to save you, man. You need to get out of that harlot house and let the Lord do what he's supposed to do with it and destroy it, man. Because that's what he's going to do with every single one of them. Lead me, O oh Lord, your house shine my righteousness because mine enemies. Make that way straight before my faith. My face. Psalms 5 8. For there's no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sculpt, uh, sculpture, sculpture. They flatter with their tongue, man. Destroy them, O oh, oh God, your house. Uh, let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against thee. See? They ain't talking about no poor people. They talking about them rich motherfuckers in the church right now. Talking about they love the Lord, man. They do not. Okay. Matthew 23, 24. What up, man? 47. All right. All right. All right. It's still working. I'm not worried about it. Matthew 23, 24. Ye blind guides. Which strain the gnat, strain at the gnat, and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but they are, but they are full of exhaustion and excess. See, he said they exhaustion, man. They said that they are exhorting you, man. Jeremiah thirty-seven nineteen, man. I ain't never seen some of these. Some of these scriptures, man, it's some fire, man. I ain't seen none of these. That's why I listen to GMS, man. They know where they all at, man. They had the whole comment board lit up. looked like a Tommy gun full of scriptures, man. Where are your prophets? It said, where are, where are now your prophets which prophesied unto you, saying, The king of Babylon shall not come against you, nor against this land. Therefore now I pray thee, O Lord, the king, let my supplication, I pray thee, be accepted before thee, that thou cause me not to return to the house of Jordan the scroll, at least I die there. Then Zechariah, the king commanded they should commit uh, Jeremiah to the court of the prison, and that they should give him a daily piece of bread out of the Baker Street until the bread of the city was spent. Thus, Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. Hmm, interesting. Let me read the 18. Moreover, Jeremiah said unto Zechariah, What have I offended against me, or against my servants, or against his people? You have put me in prison. Oh, see, he was talking about Babylon's going to get thrown down, so they got mad and they threw him in there. Hmm, sounds like what's going to happen today. We ain't scared. Better than being with y'all. Y'all should be the ones scared. You throwing the Lord's people in the prison. We over here telling the truth. You should be afraid. Surely the Lord Yahweh will do nothing 
But he revealed his secret unto his prophets, man. Classic, man. Classic. Zephaniah, verse 4. About 10 minutes, man. We almost there. I'm going to have another little clip with just a couple more scriptures on it. I'm going to empty this whole clip. Her prophets are light. Zephaniah 3, 4. Her prophets are light and treacherous persons. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. See? The just, Lord Yahweh is in the midst thereof. He will not do inequity. Every morning he doeth his judgment to light. He felleth not, but the unjust knoweth no shame. See? We're going to act like, yeah, man, we good, man. We we know the Lord. We're going to find out. But you told us you don't, G. So you in trouble. Two. We ain't acting like we with the Lord, bro. We ain't acting like we the Lord's chosen people. We uh, are proving that we are, okay? Every day. By showing them that we love them, man. That's how you know. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Yahweh Shah. Micah 311. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to close out. I'm going to come back and read a little bit more scriptures, man. We're going to do this. We're going to finish this out. So the heads thereof judge for reward. See, and the priests thereof teach for hire, and the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet will they lean upon the Lord Yahweh Shai and say, Is not the Lord Yahweh Shai among us? None evil can come upon us. Therefore shall Zion, for your sake, be plowed as a field, and Jerusalem shall become heaps, and the mountain of the house is the hive, places of the forest. See, he did have favor on y'all. See? But now you got to die for it. Because you're wicked. And you don't want to change. You're not going to change. You're too scared to lose your bag. You're too scared to lose your congregation. Well, you're going to get plucked out of the tree of life for it. That's what you get. Matthew 5, 12. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. Okay, 53 minutes. Got a little bit more time. Matthew 7, 13. I'll leave in the description the whole thing about the 5031C. If you want to go back and watch it, I just wanted to make a point. If they some bucket head, trash bag, bag of trash, full, full of trash, full of filth prophets. That's what they are. But they still prophets of the Lord. They just the ones that's going to get destroyed. Beware false prophets. See, beware false prophets will come unto you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are wavering wolves. I just did a video about the video, that movie, uh, that video called uh, The Wednesday. A little girl called Wednesday. You can go check that out. That's the one. That's the precept they use for that. Okay, Zephaniah three thirteen. A prophets are light and treacherous persons. A priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence against the law. Already read that one. That's fine. We'll shoot that arrow again. Jeremiah and ten. But the Lord, Yahweh Shai, is true, is the true God, which is Yahweh. He is the living God, which is Yahweh, and the everlasting king. His wrath, uh, his wrath, the earth shall tremble, and the nation shall not be able to abide his indignation, which means anger, man. Okay? If, he, if everybody's doing right in the churches, uh, you know, I don't know why he's saying this. I don't know why he's saying all this. He's got a whole bunch of arrows for them, man. 
I don't think they're doing the right thing, but whatever you think they are, keep going. And they rejoiced his statues, 2 Kings 17, 15. They rejoiced, rejected his, they rejected his statues and the covenant that he made with their fathers and the testimonies which he, te which he testified against him. They followed vanity and became vain. And they went after the heathen that were round about them, saw Edom, concerning who the Lord Yahweh had charged them that they should not do like them. Didn't he say that? He said, don't be like them, man. And y'all went over there and y'all went and got worse than them. That's a lot here. Okay. I got about eight more scriptures. I'm going to make a part two. And I'm going to come back and empty the clip. So, Shalom to the hopeful elect of Israel. The so called Negroes, Latinos, Puerto Rican, West Indian, Haitian. Got to give all praise to you. How about Sammy? How about Shai? Double honors to the elders and apostles of the Great Millstone who will rule well, teach well. This is sincere salutation to all the Aki and Manapua uh, listening, tuning in, uh, giving thanks that we're all pushing this to the four corners of the earth. And that's as I always says, stay prayed up. Because it ain't too many more days, bud. We finna go home. Let's get it. Shalom.